So hello there, um, Miss Capaldi and Miss Elliot. It's uh, very nice to speak to you. Um, so, do you know what percentage of uh, students with special needs currently attend this school? Um, well, we have what's called a special educational needs register um, for the school, and there are about twenty percent of the children. Twenty percent in, in on that register. But that doesn't mean to say that they have a disability, it just means that they have um, a learning need of some kind which we try to uh, address and work with. And um, how do you think they are coping in this area? I think the majority of them are coping fairly well, aren't they? I think so. Um, the school tries to provide um, uh, the level of support that each student needs depending you know on their difficulty really yeah, we do personalize them. their needs mm. and uh, what about the students that you think are not coping in the environment what how are, how are they threat so to say uh, um, well what the uh, going back to the personalized learning and um, what the school tries to do is to provide um uh, perhaps support from outside agencies and provision outside of school for some students um, so that if, it, if it's the school environment that's the problem and the, the difficulty the size of the school we try to adapt you know using outside agencies as well so so are you aware of the government's policy on integrating students with say learning disabilities or special needs altogether into ordinary high schools. If so, what do you make of this? Um, yeah, I think it's, it's been, been a trend, hasn't it, has it been over a the trend. last few yes. years, this government and the previous government. To integrate the children into mainstream school. Yes, mm -hmm. and um, I mean so much depends on parental choice as well, um, and that's why parents come to look round to have a look and to see if um, mainstream provision is the right one for their and, child. And we may go to a, a meeting if a child is coming is, is recommended to come here in September, say, if when they're in year six, uh, the primary school holds a meeting, and um, Maggie and myself will go to it and put our um, ideas forward, and uh, thus come up with a recommendation as to what, what mm, how we think we'll best cope provision. with um, that, that particular student. I mean, some students um, special provision um, in a, at a specialist inclusive learning centre is the right provision you know so it's not it, it, I think even the government government's policy doesn't mean to say that you know those would no. close necessarily. It's not a hundred percent inclusion is it? No. It's never going to be that. Um, but we do work with the specialist inclusive learning centres as well to share ideas mm -hmm. and then with us yeah. Well I've been doing a, a bit of digging on this uh, government policy mm -hmm. and um, gathering up some statistics from, from the school itself, there is, there is shown a, a, slight, a slight increase in um, students with, say, said disabilities attending mm -hmm. this school. I mean, what do you think the fashion would be, say, 10 years down the line? Because these statistics have gone up by 1 or 2% every year mm -hmm. of um, special needs students attending. What would you say what would the teachers need to be prepared for, say, in ten years' time, if this pattern was to continue? Oh, well, I think that's an interesting it's question. It's an interesting question, mm. but it's, it's a difficult one to answer, because who knows if this trend will continue, mm. you know? I mean, I think certainly if the government uh, wanted more students to be included in, most students with special education needs to be included in mainstream, they would certainly have to provide more resources, yeah, they'd have to provide more the, staff, the funding, the funding um, a more, uh, uh, even sort of a provision of rooms etc. Because if you've got a higher number of students requiring individual and very small group work then the school has got to be adapted well, to, for it. it. it will, and it, it would adapt on its way think on the way yes it, yeah it would have to. you know it mm. would have to make changes the you know the management would have to adhere to government guidelines and therefore the government would have to provide the money mm. and as Maggie said that the money and the um, you know the equipment etc that we would need to integrate these children fully and I think a lot of parents who currently send the children to 
um, the specialist inclusive learning centres um, would have, you know, would have to have a lot of say mm. if that provision was to go because mm. the, the staffing there, it's very high staffing ratio um, to the students and also their expertise is quite phenomenal. So, you know, there'd have to be a lot of thought behind it, I think, before it was to increase further. So, what would you think that the advantages and disadvantages of integrating these students with disabilities into ordinary schools, ordinary high school, should I say? Well, as, as an advantage, I think it's um, it's useful and helpful for a child with um, a learning difficulty to experience normality. Mm. You know, to to be in a school. Um, which um, imitates society, really. Mm. Yeah, because this, you know, they are going to be living in the real world, and you know, the real world has got to work with them. You know, they're not going to be excluded from that. But wouldn't you think that um, in a high school, you've got all these cliques, these groups of different students that all regularly like hang about together? Mm. Do you not think that these students with said learning difficulties? would just get excluded and bullied? Um, we, I, 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 I've seen it on occasion, but on the whole, they are, I, they are... I think that there are a lot of students who are willing to support yes, students are, that's what I was who have to other say. difficulties. Mm -hmm. um, I'll give an example of a student in my form. I had to join up with a learning coach group. Um, and there was a student in the learning in, in the other group who joined ours who has um, special educational needs and two of my students immediately went to work with this student and and supported her mm -hmm. and without me even asking so you know I think that really on the whole the students particularly in this school are very supportive mm. it would be a minority in it and it, it would be an exception I think yeah I do and I think it would be dealt with immediately. Mm. Well thank you very much for your time. Well, thank it's a pleasure. You. Thank you for interviewing us.